All right, so we're moving to the next part of the program, and uh, I think this is a part of the program where you really need to sit up straight. Um, and I and, uh, hope you had a good cup of coffee because there will be a lot of information shared in just 11 minutes with you, as we will go to the pitch parade. In this pitch parade, um, 11 PhDs and uh, postdocs will present their research in just one minute. So they have 60 seconds. We're actually quite... Um, quite uh, strict on the timing there. There will even be a buzzer involved. Uh, so I would uh, like to invite all, all the speakers to, um, uh, to line up. Um, and, uh, and yeah, we will, we will listen to the 11 pitches. Uh, you can stand at the, at the table right here. Um, also good to know is that by the end of the pitches, so after the 11 minutes, uh, we will ask the audience to cast a vote for the best pitch. Uh, so keep that in mind while listening to these amazing stories. Okay. With the ever increasing complexities of cities and with the ever more limited time at hand, the question of how to operate, manage and plan cities is more pressing than ever. Different domains involved, such as energy, mobility, and housing, are working far too independently to collaboratively find a solution to this issue. Thus, we need a new way of working, a transparent way that allows us to evaluate the consequence of decisions and craft policies accordingly, a collaborative way that ties the quadrupel helix together, a digital way that facilitates the integration of artificial intelligence, possibly an urban digital twin. To realize this, at the Digital City Program of Urban Development Initiative, we are building an ecosystem of knowledge institutes, industrial partners, and governmental bodies. So if urban complexities have ever introduced any problem in your strategic plan, business model, or research agenda, I would be happy to discuss how to change this uh, challenge into an opportunity for you. I'm Shervin Azadi, a researcher at Digital City Program. Thank you. So why is machine learning deployment so hard? Well, we've seen it already in the previous presentation, but a reason for this is, is that more than just the solution quality is of important for a successful implementation, but also how good a solution is understood and how good it is trusted. As all optimization techniques have their own advantages and disadvantages, I am therefore investigating how we can make smarter combinations of techniques such that we can leverage the advantages of more fields and one solution approach. My, an example for this is my current research in which I'm combining machine learning with search heuristics to guide for, to search towards a much better solution. With this, I aim to uh, combine a very well understood solution uh, while still being able to leverage the potentials of learning. And if you want to hear more about my solution approaches, feel free to reach out to me or ask me for a coffee. Thank you very much. search among lots of textual documents, web page, database to find the best optimal solution for your problem. For instance, you might need to ship a cargo like a pharmaceutical product from one country to another and want to know the best optimal routing options among, among the web page, the information that are in the internet. Well, my name is Zahida Rashadat and as an AI expert in text mining and data analytics, I could help you to build the best model for your own data and your, for your own domain. And uh, I would be happy if you need, want to save your time and cost uh, to come and just talk to me. Uh, thank you.
I would like to start with a question. And the question goes, do you recall a moment in your life where you experienced a lot of stress and uncertainty which made it difficult for you to make a decision? My name is Dirk Aerts, co-founder of Aristotle Cognitive Training, and we have built a software tool to help you train your cognitive abilities. So we use specialized, evidence-based cognitive tasks to help everyone improve their cognitive abilities, such as attention, decision-making, uh, uh, executive functioning, you can name them all. Uh, yeah, so we use those tools. Together with PSV, we developed this tool, and it's currently being used in the Youth Academy, uh, where every athlete receives their own personal profile, and where we use artificial intelligence to help add adaptive complexity to our cognitive tasks. If you're interested, you can learn more about it on our website or our LinkedIn page. Thank you very much. Did you know as much as 30% of energy usage in buildings is wasted? Not only that, there's an increase in demand for electricity caused by electrification of vehicles and heat pumps. Good news is we can still make our building load profile adjustable and do this without expanding the grid or exploiting more natural resources. We envision buildings that can adapt to its actual occupancy, operational needs, weather, and external grid requirements. To do that, we are combining statistical and symbolic AI methods to analyze, predict, and optimize energy usage in buildings. I'm Lasita. If you are interested in making buildings smart by using AI to predict its demand and operate it more efficiently, you can call me. Thank you. On an average day in the Netherlands, more than one million travelers take about 5,000 train trips between hundreds of train stations. To allocate so many trains to train stations and assign them to scheduled services is a complex decision-making problem. The Dutch Railways currently uses a heuristic search method to solve this problem. Still, it's uh, very hard to tell whether this method can provide a feasible solution when and why we can find the solution. So we plan to apply machine learning methods to extract the features of problems to understand the problem's characteristics. This understanding can guide us to design a better algorithm. Then we can solve this problem more efficiently and improve passengers' traveling experiments. If you are also interested in this problem, please contact me. Thanks. So trustworthy data is clean data. Real-world data sets usually have incomplete information or even duplicated data. And these kind of errors can affect your data analysis. So it's very important to define methods and uh, develop methods to repair it. So a lot of applications nowadays uh, analyze network data, such as social networks. And take as an example, social networking, each, each node refers to a person. There might be two nodes actually refer to the same person, but have slightly different names. So in our research, we define the affirmative named graph generating dependencies, the GGDs, to help you, the user, say what is high quality data for network data, and we develop the methods to how to repair those. For example, in the, exam in the social network, we can actually use the GGDs to enforce the creation of a link between people that, between nodes that actually refer to the same person. Uh, GGDs can be used for data integration, data cleaning, and also user interpretable. If you're interested, please contact me. Look at the modern world of self-driving cars, unmanned aerial vehicles, technologies we saw today. In the world with such amazing technologies, we still have a manual inspection of bridges. Think about that. In 21st century, 949 people died in bridge collapse accidents. 
and about 10% of that cases could be avoided with better inspection. Is there a more efficient way to ensure safety of our road infrastructures? Indeed. My name is Andrei Kompanec, and our project aims to develop a system for AI-aided visual inspection of bridges. It will compare performance of that system to the performance of existing inspection techniques. Reichswaterstadt and parallel companies will supply images of cracks in steel bridges that we will use to make system for cheaper, faster, and safer inspection of our bridges. Thank you. All of us must make some decisions in our daily life. This is the same for the companies in a higher level, and uh, optimal decision would improve their performance. For those companies that own website and uh, serve as online ad publisher, the revenue obtained from advertising is very important. An optimal decision for, pro for problems like pricing or ad allocation would si significantly increase their revenue as the main performance measure. So the, for solving the problems that an ad publisher faces during the process of online advertising, my research is about using data and machine learning methods, uh, which is well aligned with uncertainty and black box nature of online advertising. My proposed method can also be used in a wide variety of applications in different areas with appropriate adaptations. My name is Reza, and if you have any decision-making problem and you want to use your data and machine learning method for solving them, we can have a nice discussion. Contact me. Our perception is limited by our five only senses, and at Team Heart, we want to push these biological boundaries and give people the freedom of experience. Imagine a deaf person being able to hear again, or imagine having 360 degree vision. Imagine an app where you can download new senses. Such technology is possible because our brains are able to interpret haptic patterns. It's like interpreting your smartphone vibrations, but then much more complex. Using AI, we generate these understandable patterns, and then we incorporate them into a universal framework capable of translating any information into haptic feedback that can be subconsciously learned. Using such a system, we can give anybody a superpower. And we strive to give people an opportunity to redefine what it means to be human, to become more than human. Thank you. Well, it seems that the future of mobility is in self-driving cars. But imagine yourself as a pedestrian 20, 30 years down the line. You're standing at the edge of the pavement, and a self-driving car is approaching while you're trying to cross the road. Has the car seen you? Is it safe for you to cross? There's no one driving the car. All the passengers inside may be reading a book, uh, or sleeping, or talking to one another. It's important not to compromise safety. In our research, the most recent research, uh, we have been focusing on developing communication interfaces that allow self-driving cars to communicate with other road users. And I'm really excited to report that uh, we have made some really concrete steps towards the development of these interfaces, and it will lead to safer road crossing uh, interactions between self-driving cars and all road users in the future. My name is Debar Gaudet. I'm a postdoc in the Department of Industrial Design in TU Eindhoven, and I welcome you to reach out to me. Uh, I would love to talk to you more about our research and discuss potential collaboration opportunities. Thank you very much. Well, thanks a lot. I didn't even hear the buzzer that many times, so well, well prepared, I would say. Thanks. Um, so uh, to, to stay in the trend of the one minute, uh, we want to give the audience one minute to, to cast your vote. So you can see the, uh, the code that you can use at menti.com on the stream, so on the, on the top layer of the, of the screen. So please cast your vote over there. You can see the candidates on the screen as well. So um, maybe also good to know is that you can go to toe.nl slash summit, where you can uh, find the abstracts of all the researchers just presented and the contact details of the uh, PhD candidates and uh, um, postdocs so that you can reach out if you're interested to learn more about the topics. So toe.nl slash summit. In the program, there's a link where you can download the abstracts. Um, so 
all the information is there, there's a QR code, you will definitely find it. Um, so looking at the organization, whether votes are coming in, over there, yes. Okay, they are coming in. That's great to hear. Um, I'm very curious to learn which one is, is the best one. We also have a lovely assistant. He, today he is the chief of the envelope, actually. His name is Dan, uh, one of the empl employees also of Easy, who will hand me the results of the, of the voting, um, which is being prepared as we speak. One minute has never <laughs> felt this long. How did you guys do this? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe uh, one of you wants to uh, give a, a joke or something. <laughs> you can also vote, obviously, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, so go to menti.com, enter the code and cast your vote. I see the envelope is on its way. I, I'm just missing some drums, but... Um, getting help here from the audience, that's great. Thank you, Dan. All right. Ooh, would have loved to win this as well. All right. Um, so here I have the, the envelope. Uh, maybe uh, do the drum ruffle once more, because the winner of the pitch parade of today is Maria. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks. We have a, a lovely uh, Sinterklaas chocolate uh, surprise for you. Thank you. We hope you enjoy and thanks for your pitch. All the others also, thank you very much for, for your pitch today. And uh, I hope that many of, will, uh, many of the audience will reach out to you for the amazing researches that you're doing. Thanks. Thanks, Maria. Thank you. <laughs> All right. And that uh, is the final part of this part of the program. Uh, we will go to a lunch break now. Uh, we will return at 1.30. So at uh, uh, 1.30 we will continue with the next moonshots, the next duo talks. So we hope to, hope to see you then.